Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people of today's dentistry. Two words for you this afternoon, sedation dentistry. If you've got a lot of dental work that needs to be done, but you don't necessarily want to be around while it's being done, sedation dentistry is the answer. Dr. Mike O'Neill's the dentist. 317-849-2933. That's the number to call. Subscribe, like, ring the bell. Let's talk about sports. I want to talk about the Colts offense today because Colts offensive coordinator Marcus Brady, we're going to hear from him in a couple of minutes. But let's talk about pro football focus for a moment and where they rank position groups for the Colts offense. And what I'm talking about are the running back groups and the receivers. Running backs ranked second in the NFL. You've got Jonathan Taylor. His work as a rookie last year spoke for itself late in the season. He was fantastic. Third in the NFL last year over the last few games, yard after contact. He was really good in yards after contact. Then you've got perhaps the return of Marlon Mack. A couple of thousand yard seasons for Marlon Mack. He tore his Achilles. If he comes back at full strength, what a two-headed monster that would be. And then, I know it bothers Naheem Hines to be called a gadget guy. But what are you going to call him? You've got a bell cow running back in Taylor. You've got kind of a a slash and dash guy in Marlon Mack who's got two 1,000-yard seasons behind him. Now you've got Naheem Hines. You're going to kind of Daryl Sproles him, right? You can move him around. You can run him as a running back. You can throw to him. You can do all kinds of things with Naheem Hines, one of the fastest guys in the NFL. That's the running game. Hey, let's not forget Wilkins either. Jordan Wilkins, really good at finding a hole, running through it, and then running away from people. That happens a couple of times every season where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get a gift touchdown because Wilkins is really, really good at what he does. So there is your running back core. It is ranked second by pro football focus in the NFL. Now you get to the receiver core and you think, oh no. This receiver core, they don't have a plan A receiver. They don't have a guy that you're going to feed 120 times a season. No, they don't. But what they do have are guys who return to the Indianapolis Colts. You've got T.Y. Hilton. Granted, he's in his 30s. He's not a guy who's going to catch 100 balls and run for 1,300. You're not going to get that out of T.Y. Hilton. You've got Michael Pittman. We don't know what Michael Pittman's going to be, right? You've got Zach Pascal. We have a pretty damn good idea what Zach Pascal is and what he's going to be this coming season. You've, you've got Moali Cox, right, as a tight end. One of the highest graded tight ends in the NFL by pro football focus. You have Jack Doyle, who's amazingly consistent from one year to the next. And you've got uh, Kylan Granson, the fourth round pick out of SMU coming. And he's a guy who, granted, he can't block, but can he catch the ball? Yeah, he can catch the ball. Minus the game against Cincinnati. He caught the ball very reliably, and he could run away from people when he caught the ball, and that is a good thing. So if you've got Hilton, Pascal, Paris Campbell, if he can stay healthy, right? You've got Mo Ali Cox, Jack Doyle, Kylan Granson. What, uh, the way that Pro Football Focus describes that receiver core group, solid and dependable. But here's the thing about the receivers that you've got to remember, that in 2020, who is their quarterback? Philip Rivers, how would you describe Philip Rivers? Solid and dependable, right? Not flashy. He's not going to go get you first downs with his feet. He's not going to throw the long ball a bunch and gash defenses with a crazy vertical game. That's not who he is. Solid and dependable quarterbacks beget solid and dependable receiving cores. You think that, oh no, the Indianapolis Colts, and I buried the lead here, they're ranked 24th in the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. And you're like, ay, ay, ay. How can they win with the 24th ranked receiver core in the league? Here's how. The Jaguars, they're ranked 23rd. The Tennessee Titans, they're ranked 29th. And the Houston Texans are ranked 32nd. Now, all, as with all Pro Football Focus rankings, you got to take them with a bit of a grain of salt. It is a tool, not the tool in terms of evaluating players and scouting players. It's a tool. Don't get it twisted. This does not necessarily mean that the Colts have the second best ground game in the NFL or that the Colts receiver core 
ranks 24th in the league. That's just where one group of guys and women who sit around and watch miles and miles and miles of tape where they put the Indianapolis Colts. So there you go. And a lot depends on which Carson Wentz lines up under center and who the left tackle is going to be. If Eric Fisher is good to go week one, that is an offensive line that is going to be really difficult for defenses to contend with. If he can't play week one, that's at least one week where that left tackle position is going to require help, chipping, tight end help, all kinds of other stuff to make the left tackle position not a glaring weakness for the Colts. So there you go. There's the offense. There are the tools that Marcus Brady, the offensive coordinator, has to work with, and he's the guy who's got to get Carson Wentz ready to play this season. First question we asked Marcus Brady, what has Carson Wentz been like in the meeting room? And what's he been like on the field? Has he met or exceeded Brady's expectations as a quarterback so far? Yes, I mean, he's been great, um, both in, you know, in the meeting room and on the field. Uh, meeting room, bringing a lot of ideas of, you know, you know, this is the time of the year where we're trying to, okay, this is our offense, this is what, you know, this is what we run. Um, and then he bring in some ideas. Okay, what fits him? What you know to his skill set? Um, you know I, what you know Frank and you know in this offense, the way we built is you know to be able to adapt to quarterbacks. Obviously, we had to do it the last three years um, with different quarterbacks, and so we're doing that this off season, seeing what meshes, what what he's going to be comfortable with, how he reads different you know schemes that we have. Because um, I mean, a lot of the schemes are very similar to what he's done in the past, but just trying to get on the same page so we kind of talk the same language. And I think that's gone very well. Um, I think we're in a great place right there. And then on the field, I thought he had a um, great two weeks here, um, getting a rhythm with the with the receivers, being able to you know take some hand, you know give some handoffs to the running backs, you know working that footwork out. You know I thought we got a lot accomplished over the last couple of weeks. Is this a new offense for Carson Wentz? Are, are the Colts implementing a new offense? Brady was asked, or is this kind of a hybrid of the Colts offense plus? the addition of what Carson Wentz does really well. Exactly. That's all we're doing, you know, just going up and down of what fits him well um, and, and to, in order to make our offense success. I mean, you know, not just what fits him well. There are some things that, well, this fits our offense well that we need to improve for him that he needs to get better, get more reps at as well. So it's a blend of both. And that, you know, not everything is just built around him, but it's built around the, you know, our entire offense. With the Eagles, it seemed like Wentz was spending a lot of time in 2020 trying to play hero ball for an offense that really couldn't move the ball and a team that really couldn't compete in the NFC East. Does he understand, Brady was asked, whether with the Colts, he doesn't need to play hero ball. He doesn't need to try to extend every play, that he can actually muck some plays from time to time. Well, I mean, there's two sides to that. You don't want to take away that playmaking ability because he makes so many plays um, when he does that. Um, he just has to be smart about it. And, and a lot of it's going to be his instincts and trust in him. Um, so at the same time, we want to show him that it's okay to check the ball down to Naheem Hines, though. It may be a three-yard check down, but he can make it into 20. Um, and just seeing that and trusting that. And, you know, part of that, just showing him the film um, and then getting out there, getting those reps um, and understanding, you know, what, what we're looking for here, where he doesn't always have to make a play. But at the same time, we don't want to hinder that. Um, you know, he just has to has to manage that to, to make the – the right decisions. And I asked Brady how tough it is to go from a quarterback from Phillip Rivers, who has a very specific skill set, to a quarterback like Carson Wentz, who has a very specific but completely unique skill set from Phillip Rivers. Uh, I mean, we've kind of had to do that. You know, the more drastic one, obviously, was going from Jacoby to Phillip. Um, You know, with from Andrew and Jacoby, it was kind of, I mean, at least they were here, you know, the same time as far as understanding the offense. They did something similar as far as being able to move them um, with the nakeds or some of the zone read stuff where we're able to extend plays with those guys um, to where Phillip, where Phillip was more, just, you know, obviously just a pocket passer, get the ball out quick. He wanted to be right all the time pre-snap. So he's making checks, you know, to the last second of the, of the, of the play clock. Um, whereas here, you know, with Carson, it's almost similar kind of going back to the style of, you know, they're going to, be able to create plays um, so you don't want to hinder him mentally too much put too much in his mind um, and just give him an opportunity to just go out there and play and then and then like I said before with him what he brings that mobility where we can open it up and 
you know, move the launch point a little bit, just make it harder on defenses. And staying with the quarterback position, can some of what is obviously being lost with the Colts not having a veteran backup quarterback, can that be made up by a guy like Marcus Brady, who's the offensive coordinator and has played a lot of quarterback, and Frank Reich, who made a lot of money for a lot of years playing quarterback in the NFL? Oh, you're talking about as far as for Carson. Yeah. Um, yes, I mean, I definitely have a great room um, with, you know, Frank, myself, and, and like you said, um, with Scott, just the experience, you know, that being able to communicate and talk in the meeting rooms, um, that's going to be huge for him. And he, what, I, what I love about him, he's very vocal in the meeting room, um, whether it's his likes, his dislikes. Um, he's not one to be shy about what he doesn't like. Um, which I appreciate from a quarterback because I mean, he's a guy that's out there executing. If he believes in it, he's going to make it work. If he doesn't believe it, it's going to be harder for him to make that work. So um, I definitely appreciate that about him. Um, but yes, he does have the support of, of, of a coaching staff that, that that's there for him. And Brady was asked about Eric Fisher. Is he the kind of left tackle who left alone as Anthony Costanzo often was? Is he a guy who can be relied upon play after play to win one-on-one -on -one battles with dynamic edge rush guys. No doubt, exactly. I mean, that's what you're getting. You're getting a veteran that's, you know, that's done it um, and done it well. Um, and so where we're we gonna be able to trust that where we could just line up and no matter who's lined up over them, yes, you know, uh, you know, our philosophy always to try to give them some help, whether it's a chip or a thump every now and then just to give them a breather. But at the same time, we're gonna be able to trust both sides, you know, with Brayden on the other side, um, which is gonna be huge to open up our offense. And how's Marcus Brady seen Naheem Hines grow from year one into the running back he is right now? Um, definitely um, from year one to, I mean, from last year, I mean, he, I mean, he's definitely a weapon. Uh, it's a guy that you could trust in the backfield um, to even just, you know, just hand the ball off. You know, they always talk about, you know, getting him out the backfield, getting him in space. But I mean, he does a great job in between the tackles where he's able to get through there um, and then use his speed to create um, explosive plays for us. And I, I thought he's just grown. His vision has grown. His patience has grown um, running through the holes. Um, and, and that just comes with experience. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, being able to utilize what he brings to our offense this year. Does Brady view him as a gadget player? He didn't like being called a gadget player last week. Um, I understand where he's coming from, definitely. Um, and he shouldn't take it as a knock because he's not just a gadget player, but he does have that ability. Um, that brings problems to defenses, to some of the things that he does. And, I mean, it does make it, make it hard on defenses, but he is much more than that. Um, like I said, he did a great job just, you know, being under center and taking the ball on the handoff and running our inside zone, outside zone, or, you know, those those inside schemes. He's he, he's grown in that area as well. Sticking with the running backs, what's that running backs room like? We perceive the running backs for the Colts being selfless. How does that selflessness help that room maintain a positive attitude? Well, it's definitely going to help. Um, it's definitely a great room. Obviously, you know, overall, we have a great culture, but that room, um, those guys have been together for a long time now. Um, obviously, Jonathan um, going into his second year, but I mean, they've meshed very well. Um, they communicate well, they hang out together. Um, they're all pulling for each other to have success. And so just that support for, for, for one another uh, is great just having that in the room and, and they're all gonna be great. That's Colts offensive coordinator, Marcus Brady, good guy. And it's fun to talk to the coordinators. You get more granular information from uh, both Matt Eberflus and Marcus Brady. Tomorrow morning, breakfast with Kent. Can't wait to talk to you then. See, we got what? We got eight weeks, seven and a half weeks now until camp starts. We can still talk Colts every day. Love talking Colts. Love talking Hoosiers. Love talking Pacers. Let's go team playing the Lakers. I want to see the Lakers lose.